morning and thank God for this opportunity once again to stand before you guys and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. We, we bless each and every person today that are chiming in. We thank God for you guys for being such, uh, being diligent and being uh, faithful to the word of God. And we, we just thank God for this opportunity this morning to stand before him, to give him the praise, to give him the honor, and to give him the glory. No matter where we may find ourselves at, physically, mentally, financially, no matter where we find ourselves at, God is always worthy of our praise. He is always worthy to be lifted up, for his glory be to God. Hallelujah. He's worthy to be praised. That is the highest praise that you can give him. Hallelujah. So I bless God this morning for an opportunity to praise his holy name this morning. Amen. I, I come by this morning to, 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 to share a word. And I, and I pray that something will be said today in which I know uh, his word don't return void. So we pray today that we will be lifted up with his word and with he would uh, illuminate our, our eyes, our spiritual eyes, to be able to see what the Spirit is saying to the church in this season right now. We thank God for Jesus this morning. We thank God for salvation this morning. We thank God that, that he looked down and seen sinners like us and sent a Savior, which is Jesus Christ. Saved by grace through faith in what Christ did up on Calvary. We thank God for that this morning. We thank God for being uh, found today, that, that we're not lost no more. We thank God that he, he cared so much that he sent his only begotten son to save lost sinners like us. So we, we just glorify God in that right now. Because oftentimes we'll find ourselves getting wrapped up into this world order that we'll forget about how blessed we truly are, that he has came and promised us eternal and everlasting life. If all you're thinking about is what's going on in this world today, and if that's all your hope, that's a sad situation. If all you, all, if all your hopes and dreams are, are, are on what you see right now today, you're in a sad situation. But I come by today to offer one to you that said that I will give you life and give it to you more abundantly. He said that I came that you may have everlasting life. In other words, we're just passing through this place right now. Amen. 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 I know oftentimes we can get caught up in seeing how the world looks and we'll get misidentified as that we are of this world. But Christ said that we're in this world, but we're not of this world. See, the same thing that make a non-believer uh, get uh, confused and the same thing that make a non-believer get all upset, it shouldn't do that to a believer. Hallelujah. I want somebody to say glory be to God. No. Uh, a, a believer outlook on life should be in Christ. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We're going there today. We're going there today. A believer's outlook should be that I have already achieved eternal life. I don't care if you live to be 50. You, I don't care if you live to be 100. Your life is eternal. Your life is everlasting with God. So we, we, we put too much emphasis on how the world look. What you ought to be doing is trying to get more people saved. Amen. I pray that somebody uh, would hear this word today and, and take it with them and, and allow it to, to resonate in you. Allow it to feed your soul this morning. Our job as believers is to edify the body of Christ, lift up the body of Christ. But our main objective is to reach the lost for Christ. Reach the lost for Christ. Amen. Amen. The gospel, through the gospel, the good news, the good news. And that's why we were yet in sin. God sent his only begotten son to die for, his, for our sins that we may have everlasting life. I come before you today not knowing nothing but Christ and Christ crucified. I come before you knowing nothing but Christ and Christ crucified. I'm not going to speak with elegant words. I'm just like the Apostle Paul. I'm going to speak Christ and Christ crucified. I'm not going to promise you big houses. I'm not going to promise you big cars. But what I'm going to promise you is that Christ came to give you life and give it to you abundantly. He came to die for your sins. He came that you can be washed white as snow. That's what he came for. That's what I glory in. I glory in the Lamb of God. The Lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world. I can carry
care less about the world issues because they don't have anything to do with me because I'm not of this world. I'm in it for a little while and that's it. God is in control of everything. And if any situation that you hold and you think is better and bigger than God, you need to go back and read and, and see what God said about it. He's in control. God is sovereign. He's everlasting. He's almighty. There's no problem. There's no situation that's too hard for God. Hallelujah. And as a born again believer, you've got to understand and recognize that God has already paid the price for us in our sin. We say by grace through faith in what Christ did on Calvary. Amen. That's a word today that going to underline a lot of the reason why we sometimes fall short of trusting Christ. And as we go into the word today, let us pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, Father, we come before you right now, O oh God. We come before you as humble as we know how, O oh God. But Father, we come giving you all the praise. We come giving you the, the, uh, the glory, Lord. We lift you up for your word to be praised at all times, O oh God. There's no situation that's too hard for you, O oh God. So Father, we thank you this morning. Thank we you. thank you, O oh God. We praise your holy name. We give you all the honor and all the glory for your word to be praised, O oh God. But Father God, we ask right now in the name of Jesus, O oh God, that you will open spiritual eyes and spiritual ears this morning. That, that we may hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Amen. That somebody would be saved today. That somebody would be uh, uh, lifted up, Lord God, in your word. That they will see the truth, Lord God. For your word is true. Your word is true. And we thank you for the truth, Lord God, this morning. We bless your holy name. In the name of Jesus, we pray. We say amen. 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 And amen. 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 The gospel according to Matthew. The gospel according to Matthew. If you have your Bibles, and I pray that you do, uh, even our, our Facebook family, our Born Again Believers Ministry, I pray that each and every one of the members are chiming in and coming in and, 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 and fellowshipping with us through this way that we are having to do it right now. Uh, we do see uh, uh, we do see some four seeing us opening pretty soon. But we're going to be obedient and we're going to take time and we're going to allow God to lead us in that. Uh, but we are uh, looking like that, that our place will be opening up soon. Uh, we don't know how soon, but I, I'm, I'm watching what the governor is saying on TV and all. And, and uh, so we, we'll be able to come back together and fellowship one with another. And we're going to do that at, at our own discretion. Uh, me and the deacon already been talking, and we we, we, we just want to make sure that everybody's comfortable, make sure that everybody that want to come out can come out and be comfortable in that uh, element that we're in. And we just thank God for the opportunity to continue to reach everybody through Facebook, through YouTube, uh, and all our other venues that we're reaching out. But today we have a word, and we want us to pray, and we want us to be able to hear what God is saying to the church right now. If you have your Bibles, and I know you do, go to Matthew. Go to Matthew, uh, the 16th chapter. 16th chapter of Matthew. Holy Spirit speaking to me all week, all week, all week, and showing me some different things uh, through His Word. Oftentimes, we'll take and we'll look at the world view. And the body of believers would get confused. But as we look at chapter 16 of the Gospel of Matthew, we want to look at uh, Jesus getting ready to tell or uh, telling about his uh, resurrection. He's telling his disciples about what was going to have to happen to him uh, in order for us to have eternal life. What was going to have to happen uh in order for us to have salvation. And as we go into this chapter, as we look at chapter 16, we recognize that uh, uh, Peter and uh, Jesus came to Peter and, 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 and his disciples and asked him, who do man say that I am? And Peter gave him the only answer. Peter said that you are Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus said, you know what, Peter, 
Uh, the only way you knew that flesh and blood didn't reveal that to you, but my Father in heaven revealed that to you. And then they go on into the next uh, segment of this, uh, chapter 16. And as Jesus foretelling about his death and burial and resurrection, and then Peter say, oh no, that's not going to happen to you. See, Peter's flesh began to speak, and then Jesus had to rebuke him in the same chapter Jesus had to rebuke him because Peter thought he really understood but at the same time he didn't understand what Jesus was telling him about his resurrection. This is what had to happen. We got to understand if it wasn't for the blood of Jesus we couldn't have salvation right now. If it wasn't for the lamb being slain we wouldn't have no future for our everlasting life. We wouldn't have eternal life if it wasn't for what happened to Jesus up on the cross. You would yet still be in your sin. Amen? Amen. So we thank God for this opportunity and we'll, we'll catch this uh, verse after Jesus had to rebuke Peter in the 16th chapter around about the 23rd verse. He said uh, Get ye behind me Satan Thou art offense unto me, for thou savest not the things that be of God, but those things that are of men. In other words, Peter was saying, Jesus, we can't allow this to happen. We can't allow them. You're the Messiah. You're the king. We can't allow them to crucify you. You ain't going to die no cru Jesus said, look, get you behind me, Satan, because what, what, what God has planned for me has got to happen for you. And see, Peter flesh and mind was thinking about Jesus going to come in and they're going to take over the Roman Empire and they were gonna, he was going to sit on the throne and see he was looking like most of us look right now today a lot of times in the gospel we think that oh we in the gospel that I post and reign supreme right now but that ain't what we that ain't how we that ain't how it operate Christ came to die for our sins but he promised eternal life everlasting life he didn't tell you that on this earth that you was going to be a king. He didn't tell you that everything was going to go right in your life just when you accepted him as Savior. See, Peter was looking at this in a, in a, he said you were looking at this in a man way. So he had to rebuke him. But he goes on to say that if any man will come after me, let him, pay attention now, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Deny himself to follow Christ. The body of believers today has got to learn to deny themselves and follow Christ. When Christ went up on that cross and was buried in that ground, see, we, we got to realize as a born-again believer that, that we died with Christ and we were buried with Christ. We were resurrected with Christ. And when we come back, we're going to come back with him. We're going to come back with Christ. So you got to set yourself in a position to know that it don't matter what the world looks like, we will in Christ. Why? He said, if any man will come after me. In other words, if I'm going to be a born again believer, if I'm going to be a disciple, if I'm going to be a follower of Christ, I got to deny myself and strictly trust and depend upon Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. See, that, that this is a hard thing for us to, to do this day and time because oftentimes we will find that so many are doing just like Peter, they're looking at the here and now. They're looking at the here and now. Oh, I got to be a baller. Oh, I got to have this. I got no. Christ said you got to deny yourself. When I, what do you mean by that? It's deeper than the physical things. It's deeper than food. It's deeper than raiment. It's deeper than that. When he say deny yourself, you got to deny yourself of everything. In other words, I'm not leaning upon my flesh. I'm not leaning upon world views. I'm not leaning upon what it looked like. I'm leaning solely upon the word of God. Amen. Oh, yeah, yeah. See, it's hard for us to see this because oftentimes we'll see people mixing worldly stuff up with spiritual stuff, which it can't mix. Just like all. 
follow me, you got to deny yourself. Yeah, he said, you are going to follow me, you got to deny yourself. In other words, I don't, I, I'm, not, I'm not worried about what the world looks like because I'm, 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 I'm in Christ. I'm denying myself and I'm following Christ. Come on, here we go. He said, he said if, you, if, if you're going to have to pick up your cross. Oftentimes, man don't want to pick up his cross because it's too hard. But they'll say I'm saved by Jesus Christ because he went up on the cross. But Jesus said, if a man going to follow me, he's going to have to deny himself. I'm going to have to deny Chester. And then I'm going to have to pick. He said, pick up his cross. He didn't say that I got to pick up Jesus' cross. He said, I got to pick up my cross. He said, deny himself and take up his cross. Don't nobody want to preach the cross. Don't nobody want to preach the cross. Don't nobody want to preach the agony and the, and the pain and, and, the, and all that Jesus went through in the cross. Uh, don't nobody want to look at the, the betrayal that Jesus dealt with in the cross. Don't nobody want to look at the pain and the suffering that he did upon the cross for us to have life and have the more abundant. Oh yeah, he said you're going to have to deny yourself and pick up your cross. Don't nobody want to preach the cross. Everybody want to preach glamorous life in the gospel. But I didn't see no glamorous life in none of the apostles and none of the, the disciples. They didn't have glamorous lives. Jesus himself even told the rich young ruler. As he came to him, the rich young ruler told Jesus that I have obeyed all of your commandments even as a young man. And Jesus told him, yeah, you did well. But it's one thing that I need you to do. I need you to sell all your stuff and give it to the Pope and come and follow me. And the scripture said that the rich young ruler walked away with his head down. We got to deny ourselves and follow Christ and lean upon his word. Amen. Jesus said that if you don't deny yourself, you can't follow me. If you, if you, if you, if you can't deny yourself, then you're not worthy of the king. Why? 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 Why is Jesus saying this? Why is he saying this? Come on, let's see why is he saying this. Jesus said, for whosoever will save his life shall lose it. What are you, what are you saying, Jesus? What are you saying, Jesus? Well, what, what Jesus is saying is once you accepted him, ask your Lord and Savior, admit that you're the sinner, you died to self. Then you were born again. Hallelujah. The only way that you can have everlasting life in Christ is that you be born again. Jesus is saying that unless you die to yourself, lose your life, what is your life? Uh, 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 Self-ambition. Uh, selfishness. Uh, me, 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 I, I, I. He said you want to die to all that. You ought to die to all that. It's going to get even deeper than that. You don't even worry about what you're going to eat. You don't worry about the way you're going to live. You don't worry about the clothes on your back. Because he said if you'll seek in first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness, I will add all this unto you. See, Jesus is wanting us to trust him and trust him fully for everything. First for salvation and then allow him to be Lord of our life. That means when we walk in Christ, we deny ourselves to follow Christ. Amen. And I know I won't get a whole lot of hallelujahs about this. It's because oftentimes we find ourselves being self-righteous. Oftentimes we we'll find ourselves being self-centered. Oftentimes we love ourselves more than we love anything else. But Christ is saying you're going to have to deny yourself. The only way that you can be a true disciple of the cross is that you deny yourself and say, Christ, Father, you first. You first. You first, Jesus. I'm not concerned about me, Jesus. All I'm concerned about is the will of the Father. Yeah, we're going to find that the disciples, everybody that followed Christ, they didn't have lives like we see a lot of people saying there about the word of God. And they live like kings on a throne. But we'll find out that a lot of the disciples 
lived from house to house. We'll find that a lot of the disciples lived wherever they could live at. We'll find that none of them never did walk around like they with their chest stuck out. Like they had it all. Because they did not. I don't know where that gospel come from. This gospel says that we have to deny ourselves and pick up our cross. Deny yourself and pick up your cross. Here it is. Here it is. Jesus said, why? Because see, he is the blessed Savior. Because he is the truth and he is the life. Because he said that he is the bread of life. He said in, in John 10 that I come to give you life and come to give it to you more abundantly. See, Jesus said that what he did and what he's doing through his death, burial, and resurrection, he gave it all to you if you would just follow him. Amen? Amen. Amen. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I know it, it's, it's hard. It is hard. He said, when Christ said, lose your life, he means that the life that you're living according to the world system. In other words, he's telling Peter, look, Peter, and the disciples, this world system that you're looking at, you're thinking, that because I'm coming to be the king to just rule this world. My world is everlasting. My world is eternal. I'm looking past what you're seeing right now. The persecution of the church right now. The killing of the disciples right now. I'm looking at my father's kingdom. This is a very tragic time that we're in right now. I understand that. Yes. But it ain't got nothing on what God has already planned for the body of believers. Mm. Life and life everlasting. Eternal life. From the hour of a believer. One that's denying himself and following Christ. You see the world as a believer. You see the world as that I'm just a soldier passing through here. I'm just here for a little while. Jesus said that he's going to prepare a place for us, which is already prepared for us. That way we're here, that we shall be also one day. Amen? Amen. 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 <laughs> here it is. He said that I'm the light of the world. He's the light of the world. So when he's the light of the world, then he's illuminating everything in your pathway that's for the born-again believer. I just want to help some believers today. Here it is. Here it is. And then I'm going to go somewhere, and I'm going to show you a prime example of what I'm saying in the scripture, and I'm going to bag it up with scripture. Here's a prime example. After he said, And whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. In other words, Christ said that once you came and accepted him, admitted you was a sinner, admit that you're a sinner, admit that you fall short, admit that you can't do it without him, admit that you need the Savior. He said once you came to him, he, you found your life. See, that life that you were living in the world before you got saved, that wasn't your life. See, now that you're walking in Christ, now this is your life. Because this was ushers you into eternal life. See, all that that you did in the past, he the forgave you of your sins. He the, oh man, he's the savior. He's forgiven you. And now he said, now this life that you have in me is more far, far greater. Oftentimes we want to hold on to our past and oftentimes we want to continue to try to uh, 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 live in the past. Here it is. He said, for whosoever will save his life shall lose it, and whosoever will lose his life for my sake. That's, that, that, here it is. He said, for my sake. Have you lost your life today for Christ's sake? Ask yourself that question. Have you lost your life today for Christ's sake? Well, if you say you have, then he said that you ought to pick up your cross and follow me. See, it, it, oftentimes the believers say, well, I'm living for Christ. I'm living for Christ. But they won't reach out to help nobody. I'm living for Christ. I'm living for Christ. But they look down at others that are still lost and ain't trying to show them a word to help them. I'm living for Christ. I got mine. You need to get yours how you get it. But you say you're living for Christ. He said, no. When you lose your life and for my sake, you're going to pick up your cross. You're going to battle burdens on your brother. You're going to 
gonna reach out to those that are in need. You gonna, oh hallelujah! The strong shall bear the infirmities of the weak. Give to any man that asks you. Hallelujah! See, we we gotta understand that the cross is not just what you deal with in your life, but the cross is that Christ said you love your neighbor as you love yourself. Do unto others that you would have them to do unto you. See, we gotta understand that the Christ come with the cross come with just more than a glamorous life. For somebody to say, I'm, I'm in Christ, that's why I got all this material stuff. I'm in Christ, that's why I'm able to drive four or five different cars a week. I'm in Christ, I got a thousand dollar suit on. I'm in Christ because I got a house with ten thousand rooms in it. That ain't Christ. Christ said that, that, that foxes have holes and birds have these foxes have holes and birds have nests. But the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. See, when he say pick up your cross, that means you got to suffer just like he did. Mm -hmm. You got to go through some things. Oh, yeah. We got this twisted up. We got it twisted up. We got it all twisted up. The gospel. The gospel. The gospel of Jesus Christ is, is meant for us to deny ourselves. There's nothing wrong with having a house and a car. And some things, that's nothing wrong with it. But when it becomes your God, Christ said you got to deny yourself. And follow me. And if I'm following Christ, I want to walk like Christ walked. If, 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 if I'm going to deny myself, and then I want to uh, uh, do what Christ said, then I need to know how Christ walked. Christ walked humbly. Christ was meek. Christ was loving. Christ was kind. Christ didn't, 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 didn't step over people. Didn't step on people. Christ didn't glorify himself in the order that he said that I'm the, see, I'm the son of God. But he said, I came to do the will of the one who sent me. And his will was to come and get up on that rugged cross and die for the sins of this whole world. Yes, he did miracles to let them know who he was. Because in the old time, he showed miracles. And when they and they, and they kind of hooked that into somebody being uh, uh, from God. So yes, he did miracles. Yes, he fed hungry. Yes, he loved on people. He did it where they could see who his father was. For whosoever shall save his life. Shall lose it. And whosoever will lose his life for my sake. For my sake. If 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 I'm gonna lose my life, I lost my life for Christ's sake. I had to deny myself and lose my life for Christ's sake. Everything that I thought was important to me, I had to turn back around and say, Is this important to Christ? See, sometimes as a born again believer, you have to say, Is this important to Christ? Is this for Christ's sake? See, oftentimes we want to, oh, I'm going to do this because I want to do this. I'm going to do this because I want to do this. I'm going to do this because they want to do this. I'm going to do this because the world doing this. But is it for Christ's sake? As a body of believers, we follow Christ. We deny ourselves and we follow Christ. And Christ said he will give you life and give it to you all abundantly if your mind is set on Christ. Having the mind of Christ. How will Christ handle this situation? I'm walking in Christ. How will Christ walk right now? Mm, mm, mm. Oftentimes we lead to our own understanding. And we won't ask God to direct our path. And we find ourselves going round and round and round like a merry-go-round. Because we are not denying ourselves and leaning on Christ. We lean on self. And every time you lean on self, you find yourself in a hole. Christ said, you got to deny yourself and follow him. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, don't nobody want to do that. Don't nobody want to do that. Why, Christ? Why don't nobody want to do that? Because, uh, uh, we're going to get there, we're going to get there. But let's, let's, let's go here. Let's go here and I'm going to finish this out and I'm going to take you somewhere else. Here it is. Christ said, that if you do that, you, 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 you follow me, then then, uh, for my sake, then you'll find your life. 
Then he went on to say something profound. That when I read, I read this time and time and time again. I, I read this over and over and over. But when he, I dreamed about this all week this week. And as he was giving me this word, I, I've seen it and I've said it. But I really didn't know how profound it was. When I turn on the TV every morning, I hear a man saying, uh, uh, sow a thousand dollar seed and this is going to happen. And I hear a man saying, if you'll do this, then God's going to do that. I hear another man saying, if you'll do this, then another one, you're going to do that. But when I see what Christ said, oh Lord, it shook my soul. He said that, for what is it a man profited? If he should gain the world and lose his soul. Oh, what? Yeah. If you get, gain the world and lose your soul, that means your soul will go to hell. If all you think about is world and stuff, then your soul is on the way to hell. Christ said, what profit of man to gain the whole world? What profit of man to gain the whole world? And lose it. So why do you say that, Pastor? Because this world is passing away. This world is perishing even as we speak. This world is full of violence. This world is full of corruption. This world is full of disease. This world is full of hatred. This world is full of anger. Why would I gain this world? When Christ has promised me eternal life in heaven with him. What profit of man to gain the world? Because Christ said the whole world. I know. So why would I preach to you to gain this world? Why would I preach to you to gain the stuff of this world? Why would I sit there and tell you that you can sow a thousand dollars so you can just have some more money if Christ had already told me what profit a man to gain the world and lose his soul? I got to preach to you that Christ went up on that cross. That Christ washed away your sin. That Christ died for your sin. That Christ went in that grave for your sin. That Christ was raised for your sin. That you've been justified because of sin. What he did up on Calvary. I got to preach to you the power of the resurrection. That power in the resurrection. That's power in the blood of Jesus. The battles that you're fighting, and if you're born again believer, you claim the blood of Jesus over the battle. That's power in the blood of Jesus. That's power in what he did upon that cross. If you don't forsake yourself, deny yourself, and pick up your cross. Thank you. Oftentimes, <clears throat> take your eyes off the cross because Satan don't want you to believe that you're saved. If the preacher don't look you to the cross, then you might want to make sure that the preacher is from God. If the preacher don't remind you what Jesus did upon that cross, you might want to check the preacher. If the preacher don't lift up the Son of God, then you might want to check the preacher. Yeah. You might want to check him all the time that you've been tickled, your ears are being tickled, and you hear something that makes you say, I'm happy. Now, this ain't nothing to make you happy. It's something that makes you think about Christ Jesus. Right. Jesus. It's your ears. will get you put in hell. It's only one way. And Christ said, you got to deny yourself. And follow him. Deny yourself. If you're going to be worthy of the cross, you got to deny yourself and follow Christ. Oh yeah, not a very popular message to the world. Why? Because it ain't to the world. It's to the believers. But God did send his only begotten son to save the world if you will come to Christ. The only way you'll be saved is to come to Christ. That, that's the, that he's the only way. He's the truth. He's the way and he's the light. He's only one way. There's only one way to be saved. You can teach and preach and do everything, lift up everybody 
on the end of it. Salvation is of grace from God. Grace plus nothing equals salvation. Amen. Not by works that any man should boast, not of yourself. It's strictly upon what the blood of Jesus did upon Calvary. Oh, yes. Salvation comes only that way. Christ said that what profit a man to gain the world and lose his soul. Amen. And then he goes on to say, if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul, or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Too many of us today are selling out to the world and selling our souls because we're not following Christ how he said. Oftentimes we're changing the word of God to make it fit our situations when it didn't. John, 1 John 2 and 15. 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 Hear the word. Hear the word. Let it get in your ears. Let it open your spiritual ears and get the word in you so you can recognize when you are a true believer and you are following Christ. When you deny yourself and you're following Christ and trusting Him for salvation and Him alone, nothing else. John, the apostle that Jesus loved, the disciple that, that Jesus loved, he was always in the Bible, they would always say the one that Jesus loved. He's also the one that he told John to take care of my mama and me. Yeah, he's the one. That was right here, and he said, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in it. Well, I wonder where did John learn that from? Jesus. Jesus Christ. He walked with Jesus. Him and Peter walked with Jesus. I'm just wondering where did his mindset come from to where he's telling the man to love not the world. Now, he's not telling you to not to love your brothers and sisters. He's telling you don't love the things of the world. Well, what are the things of the world, Pastor, since you're so smart? Well, John, I'm going to tell you right now. Then he said the things of the world. He said the love, get what he said? For all these things in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the flesh. Well, I just got to have this because this is me. I just got the love of the flesh. Everything that the flesh throw at you, I got to have. But he's telling us this for a reason because he's trying to establish us to, that we can deny ourselves and follow Christ. He's not telling you that you can't have some things in this world, but he's telling you don't be in love with it. Because where your heart is, that so is your treasure. If I love something so hard, then I'm 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 I'm, I'm, I'm shortchanging Christ. If I love anything so hard that I can't see Jesus, then I'm shortchanging Christ. My job, I can love my job so much I can take my eye off Christ because it makes my flesh feel so good. I can love my children so hard that I don't even think about God. Then he he jealous. He's a jealous God. I can love my wife so hard that I don't put no emphasis on Christ. He's jealous. Oh yeah. I can love my physique so much that I ain't thinking about Jesus Christ. Because I done put all my ooh, I got the ooh, I got the shoe, I got to make sure I look good. Well then guess what I just did? I ain't thinking about Christ. Because all I'm thinking about is how I look now. See, it's the lust of the flesh. Okay? Here it is. And the lust of the eye. You can put that in a lot of different situations. You, and I ain't going to preach on this long. But you can put that in a lot of different categories. Something somebody else have. I see it. I want it. Covetousness. Hate hating on somebody. Gossiping. All that kind of stuff. And here's one that's very, very, very familiar. 
the pride of life. The pride of life. Well, I got this and I got that. I got this and I got that. Well, I got it because I went to Harvard and I got it because my dad was a billionaire. God don't, Jesus don't care nothing about that. He's no respect of a person. Jesus said, if you're going to follow me, you got to deny yourself. All that you got, that's fine, but you ain't got to tell nobody about it. Follow me. This is what Jesus is saying. Okay, you got all that, but don't let that be your God. Follow me. Well, my people live in the uh, center and say, okay, that's fine, but you ain't got to tell everybody that. That's pride. That's pride. That's lo looking down on somebody else because you got this and got that. Go to Philippians 3 and find out what Paul had to say about this stuff. And I got to understand that when Jesus was speaking, that John heard it, and John had to preach about pride. He had to preach about lust of the eye. He had to preach about the lust of the flesh because Jesus told him, if you're going to follow me, John, you got to deny yourself. And then he went on to tell him about some of the things that would hinder his walk with it. And then John went right back in there and put it in the scripture. You feel what I'm saying now? He went right there and put it in the scripture because he was taught of Jesus. He was following Jesus. And he was right there with Peter. And when he told Peter, look, man, if you're going to follow me, you got to deny yourself and pick up your own cross and follow me. He said, if you're going to gain your life, you're going to lose your life. In other words, all that stuff that you had before and whatever you had, you got to lose that and follow me and let me direct your path. Right I got to understand that even the proverb came said, lean not to your own understanding, but in all things acknowledge God and let him direct your path. Amen. Why? Because I'm not denying, I'm denying myself and I'm walking with Christ now. In other words, I'm going to God in the scriptures every time I'm walking and I'm leaning upon the scriptures to direct my path now. Somebody ought to say hallelujah. I know it don't feel hallelujah. good. Hallelujah. I know it don't feel good, but you got to hit the truth. Yeah, it hit me in the stump as I was reading. Because I had to learn sometimes to deny myself sometimes. Paul, awesome man of God, apostle that followed God one that said that he once persecuted the church. Paul, an apostle of God, one that said he was the chiefest of sinners. Now you won't hear many preachers say that. Paul said that he was the chiefest of sinners. Yeah, he said he was the chiefest of sinners. But Paul preached the gospel. Amen. Paul, when he came into contact with others, he said, I didn't come here to debate. I come to preach Jesus. And Jesus crucified. Paul wanted to remind them that you're saved by grace through faith in what Christ did upon Calvary. Paul wanted to tell them that, look, I don't even worry about who all I baptized, but I want to tell you that I believe on Christ. Yeah. He told him in Romans, he told him in the book of Romans that, 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 that he wanted to come see him, but he had to stay because he needed to preach the gospel because that was the power of God unto salvation. Paul preached Christ. Paul preached Christ. And he had all the accolades that any man could have. But he preached Christ. Amen. He did just like Jesus said do. And if we look in the book of Philippians and you hear the words of Paul, you hear the conversation that Paul was talking about in Philippians 3. I got to understand and, and, and know that Paul heard Christ when Christ said that you got to deny yourself and pick up the cross. Because Paul said that in, the, in this book, uh, he said, for uh, we are the circumcision in three, starting at the third verse. Listen to Paul. Listen to Paul. I got to understand that Paul was denying himself to follow Christ. <coughs> Paul said that, that, that for other, uh, you other circumcision, he said, which, which worship God in the spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus mm -hmm. and have no confidence in flesh. Somebody ought to say amen. amen. Paul said, I have no confidence in flesh. Yeah. I, I got to understand that he must have heard the same teaching.
teaching that Jesus told Peter and them that you got to deny yourself and pick up your cross and follow me. Uh, he said that I, I rejoice in Christ and have no confidence in the flesh. He said he had no confidence in the flesh. Why? Because he was denying himself to follow Christ. See, as a body of believers, we got to understand that we should have no confidence in this flesh. Oh, man, I know I'm messing with somebody today. And then he said, though I might also have confidence. Paul said, now, nah, nah, he, he said, now, nah, I don't have no confidence in this flesh. But guess what? I can. I can. Yeah, I can. Yeah, he said, you come on in my office here and find out all this stuff that I got. Okay? He said, but I don't have no confidence in my flesh. But he said, but I can. Come on, let me show you in my office. Come and sit in my office and check out some of the stuff that I had. Then Paul said uh, 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 that, 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 though I might also have confidence in the flesh, if any other man think it that he had, whereof he might trust in the flesh, I'm more. Paul said, I got, I got more than you. Paul said, I got more than you. This is the apostle Paul talking now. This is the apostle Paul talking, and he's telling them that, that I was circumcised the eighth day out of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin. And he said, and Hebrew of the Hebrews. As touching the law. That means he kept the law. That means he was walking with the law. That means he was walking in the law. That means all this he was doing because he was doing it in respect of the religion that he followed at the time. He, oh, he, he had all kind of accolades right here. Then he said, a Pharisee concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching the righteousness which is in the law. Blameless. But here it is, guys. Here it is. He said, but what things were gained to me, those I count lost for Christ. What? What'd you say, Paul? He said, those things that I count as gained to me, those I count as lost for Christ. Well, Christ told him in, the, in, in Matthew that if you if you gonna follow me, you have to deny yourself, right? He said you have to deny yourself, pick up your cross, and follow me. And Paul, a born again believer, he had to come just like me and you. He had to be born again. He had to accept Christ as his Lord and Savior. He had to he had to say he's a sinner. He, had, he matter of fact, he said he's the cheapest of sinners. Paul said even when I want to do right, he was still with me. He said I'm wretched man that I found myself. He said, I call it as gone, that I may win Christ. 
He said, in other words, what I'm doing is that I'm, I'm running after Christ now. Anything that Christ would have me to do, that's what I'm doing now. I ain't worried about the world system anymore. I'm not worried about the accolades that they were giving me no more. You ain't got to call me by no certain name. What I'm doing is I'm going behind Christ. I want to do the will of the Father who sent me. He want to, oh, hallelujah. He want to reach the lost for Christ. He want to help with those that are in need. He want to, come on now. Build up the church. Amen. Amen. He said, and be found in him, not having my own righteousness. Oh, glory and hallelujah. Glory and hallelujah. Paul said, I, I'm not having my own righteousness. Hallelujah. See, the word of God said that we were made right through the blood of Jesus Christ. Yes. He justified us upon Calvary. Those that believe upon him and him alone. He justified us and he made us right in Christ. In Christ. And found in him having not and having not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ. The righteousness which is of God by faith. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering. Being made conformable unto his death. Paul is saying, I want to get closer to Jesus. Paul is saying that I will work on myself, my salvation with fear and trembling, walking in the Lord. Paul is saying that I ain't thinking about myself righteousness no more. I'm thinking about the righteousness that is in Christ Jesus. Paul said, I'm denying myself and I'm fighting for Christ. I'm denying myself and I'm following Christ. I'm denying myself and I'm trying to win Christ. Well, yeah. This yeah. is the true revelation right. of a born again believer. Not thinking about the world system more than you are your heavenly father. Your conversation ought to be in heaven and not in this world. Oftentimes, we run behind the world and forget about Christ. We run behind the world and forget about a Savior. We run behind the world and forget about forgiveness. We run behind the world not even thinking about we can be hell bound. Why do you say that, Paul? Paul goes on over in the other verse, and this is going to sound familiar, and I'm going to jump right down to it. Paul said, nevertheless, wherefore, we have already obtained. In other words, Paul said that, that he was running behind Christ. Okay? Now, pay attention. If you know anything about a burglar or anybody that's running from the law, when they get caught, they get what? Apprehended. Right? Right? You get apprehended. Paul said it now here. He said it is. He said, he said, for not though I have already obtained, either were already perfect, but I follow after, if though I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended. Y'all get it? Paul said, I'm already apprehended. Christ already got me, but I'm still running behind. Got Christ got me, but I'm still running behind. In other words, there's nothing in this world that I'm concerned with. Christ got me, and I'm still running behind it. Why? Because I want to know the high calling that's in Christ Jesus. My mind ain't set on the world, is it? My mind is set on Christ, who I'm in bondage to already. Glory be to God. Amen. See, he said he want to know the power of his resurrection. So Paul goes on to tell the church of Philippi, he said, brothers, be followers. And I'm telling you, born again believers, be followers. Be followers together of me. And mark them which walk, in verse 17, and mark them that walk so as ye have us for an example. Let's use those that are walking behind Christ and denying themselves of the worldly lust and the fleshly stuff and they follow in Christ and Christ is their bread of life. Christ is their living water. Christ is their all in all. Christ is the King of Kings. Christ is the Lord of Lords. Christ is I am. 
They're not following after the world, sister. They're following after Christ. Let's walk them that are doing that. And let's be followers of them. Why? Because here it is. Pay attention. Pay attention. Here it is. He said, for many walk, uh-oh, many walk of whom I have told you often, and I tell you guys too, and now tell even weeping. Paul said, I'm weeping when I'm telling you about these guys. I'm weeping when I tell you about this because I don't want y'all to walk like this. I want y'all to believe in the death, the burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And I want y'all to walk by faith, knowing that Christ has saved you. I want y'all to, to push uh, for the high price, which is in Christ. Uh, we're already saved. We already believe Christ for salvation. But I want y'all to walk as Christ. I want y'all to walk denying yourself and to win Christ. I want you to walk and be an example to other believers as I am. But I don't want you to do this. He said, I don't want you to do this. This is what I don't want you to do as a born again believer. I don't want you to do this because right now I'm weeping. I'm weeping for these brothers right now and sisters. Here it is. Here it is. He said, that they are the enemies of the cross. Paul, why are you saying that? They're the enemies of the cross. Oh, man. It's going to get deep, y'all. It's going to get deep. Mm -hmm. If we're not preaching the cross, you're the enemy of the cross. If you're not preaching, saved by grace through faith in what Christ did on Calvary, mm -hmm. and you're not preaching the cross, you're the enemy of the cross. If you're not saying that you're saved only by faith in Christ, by grace of God, not by works, then you're enemy of the cross. Here it is. He said, pay attention. For they are the enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction. Whose end is destruction. Whose end is destruction. Whose God is their belly. If all I'm going to preach to you about is money and how you can get money and how you can make money, then my God is my belly. If all I can preach to you is about how you sitting high and mighty, then my God is my belly. See, they're taking power away from the cross. Paul was weeping when he said. Paul was weeping when he said. Because he's seen and taken away the power of what Jesus did upon Calvary. And if we don't stick with preaching the cross, we deny what Christ did upon the cross. Christ died for lost sinners like me and you. And when you take away from the power of the cross, then you're an enemy of the cross. Every message ought to be about Jesus. Because Jesus said, you have to deny yourself and pick up your cross. Uh -huh. Paul said, whose end is destruction? Whose end is destruction? Who God is their belly? And whose glory is in their shame? In other words, you might be glorifying stuff that's in this world, but that ain't what Christ called for you to do. You, you're glorying for stuff that's in this world when you ought to just use what Christ has blessed, what God blessed you with, to use it for you to maintain, to use it to help others, to use it to just do what you need to do. But no, you want to glory in the stuff, and it's to, it's, it's to their shame. Here it is. Who my earthly things? Who my earthly things? In other words, Christ was telling them that you got to deny yourself and pick up your cross. Don't mind the earthly things. Don't mind the earthly things. Yeah. Pick up your cross and follow me. Deny yourself and pick up your cross and follow me. Yeah. The apostle John heard it and he said, love not the world nor the things in it. Then Paul heard it because Paul came back and told him the same thing. He said, I call all that is done. Peter heard him. Peter heard him. Peter ended up hearing him. And Peter said, and if you are suffer for righteousness sake, then glory be to God. But he said, if you suffer as a thief or whatever, okay, then that's what you do. But he said, if you suffer as, as somebody who's doing the will of God, then guess what? Glory be to God. The body of believers will suffer sometimes. Christ said that they will hate you because they hated me. Yeah. In John 17, Jesus was praying for the apostles and for us. And he said, Father, uh, uh, these that you have given me, uh, they're in the world, but they're not of the world. He said, I don't want you to take them out of the world, but I want you to protect them from the 
while they're in this world. Sanctify them and use them. That's what he said. He said they were going to go through some trials. They're going to go through some tribulations. They're going to go through some hardships. But they're going to go through them in Christ. Hallelujah. I'm not going to preach and tell you that you're not going to have some trials and tribulations. Because Christ went through it. Christ was full of the mind. He was full of God. He was full of the mind. But he humbled himself. He humbled himself even to death upon the cross. Christ walked humbly when he walked this earth. Yeah, yes, he did. Christ was meek when he walked this earth. Yeah. Christ was long suffering when he walked this earth. Here he is, he said, for our conversation is in heaven, from which also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus. Paul even said that our conversation to be in heaven. Our conversation should be in heaven. In other words, our citizenship is in heaven. See, you, you, you live in here for right now, but this ain't your true citizenship. All right? I don't get caught up in all that citizenship stuff here in the United States. All right. Oh, man, I'm this and I'm that. No, I don't get caught up in that. I'm going to be here until the Lord come get me. I don't get caught up in all the political stuff because he didn't call me to get put caught up in that. He called me to preach Christ crucified. Thank you. He, calls, he called me to live. And, and live in him. I don't get caught up in the politics. I get caught up in Jesus. He said, let your conversation be as in heaven. My conversation got to be about Jesus. Yeah. My conversation got to be about his righteousness. Thank you. His, my conversation got to be about his fault. Right. My conversation got to be about his love. Well. My conversation got to be about his humbleness. Uh -huh. Why? Because greater he that is in me than he that is in the world. My conversation got to be in Christ. Your conversation as a born again believer ought to be in Christ. Somebody come to tell you about all oh, this going on. You need to tell them that I'm standing on the word of God. He said he'll never leave me, nor will he ever forsake me. I'm standing on the most high God. He's my God. And all things work for the good of those who love the Lord. Christ. Christ crucified. The world issue shouldn't turn you around as a believer. Deny yourself and pick up your cross and follow Christ. Deny yourself. Pick up your cross and follow Christ. I'm not telling you that every day is going to be just like you want it. I know what I'm telling you that it's going to be just as God has to have ordered your steps. I'm not going to tell you that everything going to go just like you want it. But I'm trying to tell you that he's going to get the glory no matter what it is. When you're a child of God. I'm not telling you that you're not going to have to go through some sickness sometime. Because we are in a fallen world and sin is in this world. And sometimes you just might get sick. But Christ still with you. Thank you, Jesus. Don't allow your belly to be your God. That's one thing. Don't allow your belly to be your God. Body believers, don't allow your belly to be your God. What is that? We just found out the earthly thing. The earthly things. Because they mind the earthly things. Don't allow your body, your, your, your belly to be your God. When you find yourself complaining about how you're living or what's going on around you, think about what you're complaining about. You're complaining about God. When you find yourself upset because things ain't going right, then guess what you need to be doing? You need to be talking to God. For our conversation is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, our Lord Jesus. Quit looking at the world, body believers. Quit looking at the world. Quit looking at the world. Quit looking at the world. Pray for the world. Pray that they be saved. Pray that they will come into the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Pray that they will, somebody will preach the gospel to them if they're lost. That don't have nothing to do with 
follow Christ. Christ came to give us life and give it to us more abundantly. Christ came to give us life and give it to us more abundantly. Yeah. Colossians 3 and 3 to the born again believer. Colossians 3 says it like this. If you then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitting on the right hand of God, set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. Set your affection on things that are above, and not on things on this earth. Don't allow the earth to be your God. Christ said, deny yourself and follow him. Deny yourself. Pick up the cross. Set your affection on things above, not on things that are on earth. Stay in the word so you'll recognize the things that are of Christ. Stay in the word so we'll recognize what we should be doing as the body of believers. How should we think? How should we move? How should we live? How should we walk? In Christ. The answer is in Christ. The answer is in Christ. The answer is in Christ. Deny yourself and follow Christ. He is our Savior. He is the Lord of your life once you come into the knowledge of who He is. Once you admit that you're a sinner, once you admit you fall short, because the Bible says all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But it says also that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish. Christ said that I came to give you life and came to give it to you more abundantly. Yeah, and it also said that the thief came to steal, kill, and destroy. Don't allow the thief to be your, your head of your life. So why you make your better, you go. Christ said, deny yourself. Deny yourself. Pick up your cross and follow him. Father God, we thank you today. Father God, for this opportunity to share your word. Father, we bless you right now. Father, we give you all the praise. We give you all the honor and we give you all the glory. Father, we pray that somebody heard the word today, oh God, to make them see Christ and Christ alone. We pray, oh God, that uh, the word did not fall on deaf ears this morning, oh God. That we will understand that we will not let this earth be our God. That we will understand that we will not let our belly be our God. That we will seek thee the things of heaven. That our conversation will be in heaven. That our look will be looking for the Savior to come. Lord God, that we will continue to seek thee first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness. Father, we thank thee for the cross of Christ. We thank you, Father, for the blood of Jesus that washed away the sins of the world. We thank you for the Lamb that was slain before the foundation of the Lord. We thank you, O oh God, that you saved us, Lord God. For when we were yet enemies, O oh God, when we were yet in our sin, you sent the Savior to die for sinners like us, O oh God. We thank you. thank you. We glorify you. Yes. We give you praise. We give you honor. We give you glory. Father, I pray today that the body of believers, O oh God, that listen to this word, that they will be edified. And not only that, Lord God, that they will begin to deny themselves, oh God, and pick up their cross and follow Christ. Father God, you said that if we're gonna be if we are gonna be worthy of what you did up on Calvary, we got to deny ourselves. So we are ask right now that you are strengthening us, oh God, to deny ourselves and follow you, oh God. We thank you for this opportunity, Father God. We thank you, oh God, that, that you have mercy on us, oh God. We thank you, O oh God, for the grace that you have when you saved us, O oh God. Father God, we thank you, Lord God, for the believers today. Father God, there may be somebody out there today, O oh God, that haven't accepted you as their Savior. Father God, I right now offer you to them as Savior right now. That one that's here right now, that will pray that they be saved right now. That they will pray and come to you for the Savior of their life. That they will confess that they are sinners. Confess that they fall short. And turn to you, Lord God, and let you put a repentant heart in them, O oh God. And come and follow you as Savior. And let you be the Lord of their life. 
I'm offering Christ to him right now, Father. For there is our uh, alternative. For there is hell. Hell, long ago we know, that wasn't made for us as the body of believers, but it was made for, for saving his angels. So, Lord, I ask right now that you will save, Lord God. Reach out with your hands, Father, and check, save right now. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you, Lord God. And we thank you for the days to come, oh God, that you would give us an opportunity to fellowship once again in presence, oh God. That we can come together and not the second, the fellowship of the saints. We thank you for this opportunity, oh God, to continue in your word, Lord God. Even though we've been going through a, 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 a different time in this season, we thank you for this opportunity you have brought us together. To still operate in your work, oh God. For you get the praise, you get the honor, you get the glory. It's all about Jesus. It's all about Jesus. It's all about our Savior, the Lord Jesus. It's all about Jesus Christ, oh God. It's not about us, it's all about you, Father God. We thank you for that opportunity, oh God, to give you praise and honor and glory. Father God, for we deny ourselves right now and pick up our cross and follow you. Father, we bless you, we thank you. It is in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, oh, yes. that we pray. And we say amen, 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 amen. And amen. amen. Grace and peace be with you, always. Amen. Amen. amen.